The GPU market has recovered significantly in the budget sector since the last crypto rush. And although the higher end cards are significantly more expensive, the used market is in a much better shape as we leave 2025 and enter 2026. Let's discuss some of the best budget GPUs to keep your eye out for at this point in time. I think a lot of these are to be expected, but we've also come a long way from the RX 570 days. Before we dig into this video, I'd like to say not to forget to leave a like and subscribe, and click the bell icon so you'll be notified about all our future uploads. This video is more meant to give a rough list on the current average USD price on use sites such as eBay or Jawa.gg. And while prices fluctuate, I think these are fair asking prices for the cards we'll be discussing. With that out of the way, let's dig into some of the better budget graphics cards and how much you can expect to pay. Starting off with a card I never thought I'd be talking about in this fashion, considering I still think it's a rather high-end offering. The RTX 3070, even though it features only 8GB of memory, has an incredibly powerful GA104 based GPU that can power through almost any modern game at 1440p at beyond comfortable frame rates. Coming in at between $230 and $280 used, this card might require some sacrifices on the texture quality, but it's still incredibly powerful. My most recent review of the card put it as a solid 1080 and 1440p option, with 4K being possible at or around 60Hz if you're comfortable using DLSS. I would love to use a 3070 as either an eSports or a AAA card, and although this is kind of pricey, it sits so close to a 3060 Ti only being about $20 more in my region, that I'd rather get one of the 70 tier cards. It really does offer so much more performance even if it does have the same memory interface as the 3060 Ti. It's also cheaper than the 6700 XT, which would be another great 1080 and 1440p option, but the Nvidia offering is more powerful, hinting at more of the 3070s existing in the wild. Pick one of these cards up if you're wanting a performance update over something like a 1070 or a Vega 56, and although it draws a decent amount of additional power, your frame rates will improve significantly, as long as your CPU can keep up. Another great option that's slower than a 3070 but is much cheaper is the RX 5700 XT. Coming in at between $130 to $150 on the used market, this fully unlocked Navi 10 XT based card sports a similar memory interface to the 3070 and sits a little below a 3060 in terms of raw FPS. I also reviewed this card a year or two ago and at the time it was a little more expensive but it still offered an excellent value on the used market. The downside to this card is it also features 8GB of memory, which can be fine if you're willing to make some sacrifices, but by and large this is a very powerful GPU with a very strong memory interface. I would recommend picking up at least a 2 fan cooler considering the card can draw a decent amount of power, but its ultimate lack of additional ray tracing and AI features gives it a rather efficient power footprint. This is a classic GPU in the sense that it doesn't feature any of the modern RT and Tensor units, but it still supports DirectX 12 Ultimate giving you the ability to run modern mesh shaders or other modern graphics technologies besides ray tracing. It remains an awesome card for the price, and although it's starting to get older, it's incredible if you're comfortable making some trade-offs. The next cards I'm going to mention in quick succession, because they provide a decent value but ultimately don't have anything worth writing home about. The RTX 2070, coming in at between $150 and $170 used, is another 8GB card that performs similarly to the 5700 XT for a little more money. The ARC B580 comes in at consistently around $250 for either a brand new or factory add-in model, and performs similarly to the RTX 3060 Ti in new games, has 12GB of GDDR6 and all the new ray tracing and tensor processing features found in modern graphics cards. Ultimately the 3070 can be found for a similar price and outperforms it though. The RTX 2080 can be had for around $200 on the used market, and is another 8GB card with a very powerful graphics processing unit. This card performs better than the 5700 XT, but worse than a 3060 Ti, making it a good alternative to a base 3060 but with less memory. The RTX 3060 12GB can be had for between $220 and $250 on the used market, making it probably one of the better budget-focused production cards. However, considering the B580 can be found for a similar price, and that card has faster memory and a faster core, I'm more inclined to recommend the Intel option at that price point. The ARC A750, another 8GB graphics card, has a similar raw width to a 3060 12GB, but performs more similarly to a 3050 in gaming. 
for around $160 to $180 on the used market for a really nice third party model, this card is a great starter option for a production focused system speaking from experience. The more expensive A770 16GB is almost double the price while offering only about 10% more performance at most in gaming workloads, only truly coming ahead in video and animation rendering. The RX 6800 can be purchased for between 280 and 320 of your American shekels on the used market. And while the 16GB graphics card seems to have been forgotten, the 3070 Ti level of performance is nothing to sneeze at, and I'm surprised this card isn't more expensive considering what it has on board. This is another rather expensive card, but considering it slots in solidly above the 3070 in terms of current price, I think it's worth mentioning because the card will perform excellently in 1080, 1440p, and 4K. Generally speaking, there seems to be three rough tier of graphics cards available on both the new and used markets. There seems to be a hard price floor at around 150 ish dollars for older GPUs that are actually worth buying. That floor increases to around $250 if you're buying new for a modern GPU, unfortunately. Around this starting price, up to around $350 is what I would consider to be a budget graphics card. You can still get tons of performance for the price, don't get me wrong. I think it's also valid to say that $150 to $350 is probably around what most users are able to spend on their graphics processing unit in 2025. Above this, starting at around $420 with the 16GB 4060 Ti, which I don't think is all that great of a deal, and you start to enter 4070, 7800 XT, and maybe 6900 XT levels of performance. This is probably the most amount of money that a normal user should spend on their card, and even then a lot of strong arguments can be made for cards that are cheaper. Above this is your 4080, 4090, and 5090 tier cards, which all come in at $1000 or more. This is just cuckoo money to be spending on graphics cards, but if you can afford to spend that much, you're probably in a much better financial position than I am, so I really can't say much. But just keep in mind that the more you spend, you don't really get tons of additional performance until you get to the 90 tier, which is universally still $900 or more on the used market. I think in general the 3070 provides the best raw value on the market, but if you don't have many available in your region, I think there are plenty of other cards worth checking out, even if I agree not all of them provide as excellent of a value.